Hello everyone and welcome to my bold and beautiful Today Update channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Lovely Luna infiltrates the foresters on the down low bold and the beautiful recap highlights. In addition, Ridge rose to accept Eric's challenge, praised Brooke for being his muse, and delighted in his son joining the ranks of forester men who design. Now let's dig a little deeper into what exactly happened. Enemy in the living room. At the Forester Mance, the overstuffed living room hosted yet more garment bags, design supplies, and a wedding veil courtesy of Plucky Luna, the latest newcomer at Forester Creations. Eric welcomed the young lady to his abode and wondered what it was about her that set her apart from the other applicants competing for the company's coveted intern slot. That question necessitated Donna admitting that she'd taken quite the shine to Luna when the young woman made herself indispensable during a particularly rough workday and that she'd insisted to Cindy from Human Resources that Luna be offered the job. And no, she didn't bother looking at Luna's resume. She should just tell from looking at and working with her that she was sweet, capable, and a good person. Also, Luna struck Donna as more than trustworthy, hence Donna tasked her with rushing the supplies over from the office. A clearly smitten RG claimed that he could see that same in his contemporary, and he was slightly emboldened to hear that she'd been following his exploits as an influencer. However, he was also slightly embarrassed by her mooning over him sketching so Eric slyly signaled Donna to get her out of RG's line of sight. But despite her change of position, Luna's eyes were very much locked on RJ. Oh, if only the family unit had been privy to that curt phone call that Luna took in which the caller near hysterically insisted that she stay away from the foresters, lined in the sand. Meanwhile, at Forester Creations, Ridge blanched at Eric's threat that he'd better be on top of his game, just as he rejoiced over RG's leaning into his talent for design. He couldn't be prouder of his baby boy, but he does hope that it doesn't get back to Thomas. Try as he might, Ridge just kept coming back to Eric's vague challenge. Why does his pop seem to feel like they're in a competition? Why has Eric come to feel as though everyone at the company sees him as replaceable? Why did he hand Ridge the baton if he didn't actually want to retire in the first place? Despite himself, Ridge couldn't help but feel that Eric's pig-headedness when it comes to this grand final collection wasn't good for him. What's more, he couldn't help but take Eric's challenge seriously. Be on top of his game? Hey, Ridge was playing in a whole other league. Maybe it's Eric who needs to step his game up. And the new intern Habers, a dark secretat forester creations, Brooke tells Ridge that Eric told her to put him on notice. Ridge doesn't get it. Brooke explains that Eric is determined to do his final collection alone, or at least without you. It seems like he's in some kind of competition with you. At the Forester Mance, Eric leans over RJ as he sketches and tells him he's got it just perfect. Donna comes in carrying a huge bag and explains that Luna the intern will be over soon with the inventories Eric requested and she can be trusted to be discreet. Not the thick to be now that Brooke knows it's not really a secret presently. Eric agrees that she kind of putrefied that but assures Donna it'll be alright. Donna decides perhaps it's for the stylish now he can invite Ridge to join them on the line. Eric doesn't want Ridge's negative energy near this line. Rather, he's doing it with his talented and pious grandson. In a moment alone, Donna asks Eric how he's feeling and notes the tumblers in his hands are getting worse. They are intruded by a knock and the intern Luna struggles in with an armload of inventories. Donna rushes over to help her. She also introduces Luna to Eric and RJ, who's easily floored by her beauty. At Forrester, Brooke tells Ridge, I am as confused as you are. Ridge lemons that Eric has not been himself recently. He thinks he took the stapler conceit as being about him. Brooke thinks he's right. Eric believes they all suppose he's interchangeable. Ridge recaps that because of that he feels the need to produce his own line. Brooke adds, with our son's help, at the Forrester Mance, R.G. thanks Luna for bringing over the inventories. She says it's not a problem. It's an honor to get to meet fashion kingliness. R.G. muses, imagine being his grandson. Donna knew they could count on Luna, who admires their home. Eric asks the girl to call him Eric and asks how long she's been out of Fashion Academy. She's just finishing up. Eric asks her what set her piecemeal from the others. 
Donna explains that Luna pitched in on event while staying for her interview, they had a nice talk, and she told Cindy in HR to hire her. Eric asks if she indeed looked at her capsule. Donna snoots. When she looked into her eyes, she knew they could trust her. RG sees the same thing. At Forrester, Ridge asks Brooke how RG is doing. Brooke muses, you mean his skill. Ridge just wants to make sure he wasn't wrong about him. Brooke says there was no mistrustfulness in her mind. She walked by on Ridge Forrester Jr. Ridge enthuses that this is what he's wanted. He believes RJ has further gift than any of them. Do not tell Thomas I said that. Brooke laughs at him being similar a proud pop. They embrace. She's sure Ridge's head is spinning over Eric, making a new collection without him. At the Forrester Mans, Luna enthuses about being in the Forrester Mans with Eric Forrester and tells RJ she's followed his social media for times. She gushes over the sketches and can only imagine what it would be like to wear commodity so gorgeous. Luna's phone makes a sound. She steps down to take a call. She tells the person she can't talk. She's at work. The woman on the other end asks, in Los Angeles. Luna says yes. The woman warns. I do not know what you were doing, but just stay down from the foresters. Luna says he has to go. The woman barks, Luna, here to me. Stay down from the foresters. Luna disconnects. She also watches the scene in the living room with sadness. At Forrester, Ridge and Brooke go over Eric having commodity to prove. Ridge feels this isn't good for his pater. It's trying on him. He complains about the secretiveness. I do not know if I am okay with it. At least RG is designing. They agree Forrester is doing okay and Ridge says it's because they've a plan which does not include Eric designing a line out of nowhere. He's coming after me, huh? Brooke sighs. Yep. Brooke wonders what's going on in Ridge's head. He muses about how much he loves and respects his pater and remembers how he learned from him. He's so thankful for everything he inseminated in him. They worked together but he passed the cane and now he should relax. He knows his father has another collection in him, but he does not suppose it's good for him. Ridge tells Brooke that he's not only on his game, but he's in a whole other league now because of her. He does not know what they are doing in that living room, but perhaps he needs to step up his game. At the Forrester Mans, Luna smiles as she watches Eric and RG working together. Donna spots her and walks over to say, I am the same way. It's always so emotional and inspiring to see great artists at work like this. She predicts the line will be the crowning achievement to Eric's career. Across the room, RG asks Eric if Luna is still watching him. He says she is. RG admits this makes him nervous. Eric shoots Donna a look, and she hustles Luna off to deal with the samples. Eric tells RG he does not want him to feel uncomfortable at all. RG assures him he's not concerned about his parents he believes in him and this collection. Eric can't tell him how important this means to him, to have him following in his steps. He tells RG he's a fine youthful man and the best mirrored one, he's the only child of Ridge and Brooke and a lot comes with that. Learn from me. Eric vows to use the alleviation he's brought to him to bring the new line to life. He can't imagine a better platoon than the two of them to do it together. They embrace. Luna watches and grins, but also looks sad. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.